Hi, today we're going to build an HR employee onboarding process using InfoPath and K2 Designer for SharePoint. Let's first take a look at the InfoPath form. We have a very straightforward InfoPath form capturing some position details and personnel details, which as you can see are stored in the InfoPath form. We also have another view that will be used for the manager who's going to approve the, the, uh, the request and some additional uh, views for uh, HR approvals as well as potential rework steps uh, that may take place as part of the process. This form has been deployed to uh, our SharePoint environment, uh, so we'll go ahead and go to that now. We'll open up the form library, and as we see, if we add a document to this form, we have the employee onboarding form here available for us. But let's go ahead and wire up a process for this. I'm going to go to the library settings and open up the K2 Process Designer. And we'll go ahead and create a new process. We'll give this process a name. We'll say this is our HR on morning. And we can give it a category of employee management. We need to define a label for the instances of the process so that we can identify different instances from each other. And as you can see in our context browser, we can browse through the position and personnel details that are captured as part of that InfoPath form. So we could take the position name and possibly the last name of the user being onboarded uh, and use that as our identifier. If there were any additional fields that we wanted to capture that weren't part of the InfoPath form, um, we could uh, specify those here. To start the process, we're going to use that submit view. So you'll see that the views from the InfoPath form are reflected here. We're going to select that submit is the view that we want to use to initiate the process. So we click finish, you'll see that the canvas comes back and we can start uh, building out our process. Let's drag on a user task. And we'll do this as the manager approval. In the manager approval step, we're going to allow the manager to approve decline and send the task for rework. We'll keep the standard outcomes here, all going to new steps in the process. For the form, we will use the manager approval view of the form. And for the action, we have an action section here that's going to define that the manager action uh, is the field that's going to be used to surface the available actions to the user during the, during the task. For participants, we do actually have a piece of context within the InfoPath form that captures the hiring manager. So rather than just specifying an individual user or an individual group, we can go in and actually use the hiring manager information captured in the form to define the user that's going to approve this task. We can specify that we want to notify the user using a standard email template or a customized email template. So here you can see we've added some context here of the person who's being onboarded and the position name just by dragging those fields across. Clicking finish will take us back to the design canvas. You can see our three new steps have been created for approved decline and rework. Let's quickly wire up our rework step. We'll have a resubmit and cancel option. Rather than moving forward in the process, the resubmit is actually going to move back and go to the manager approval step again, and the cancel will just go to our already created little decline step. We'll use the rework view of the form and the rework action. For participants, we're going to use our originator context to send it back to the person who submitted the form originally, and click finish. For the additional approval, we can also do one more task and send it to HR for approval. The decline will go to our already created decline step and approve will go to a new step. For the form, we'll also use the HR task and we'll use the HR action field. For participants, I'm going to use a K2 role of our HR approvers. 
drag that on and click finish. Once we've uh, gotten through the approval cycle, we want to potentially go and do some automated tasks for onboarding this employee. Some of the things that we may want to do might involve adding the user to Active Directory. So we'll drag on the Create New User step, where we have the context of the uh, information for this new user, and we will map those fields to the fields that come from our FOPAT form. So we have a first name, last name, and full name, just a combination of those two. The user logon name has been defined in the form, as well as the initial password. We can also specify that the user must change their password at the next logon, since we're generating that for them. Another thing, we have the initials here, which we don't capture in the form, but because we have the first and last name, we can actually calculate this. So I'm going to use an inline function, and just drag an expression on there. And within our inline functions, I can go into the text section, and I can say I want to grab the left value of the first name, the first character, and then combine that with the first character of the last name. and together that will provide the initials. We can also set some initial contact details based upon information we've captured in the form, things like our street address, the phone number, and the email address. There's also a whole host of additional Active Directory properties that can get set here, division, department, uh, and so on. We'll go ahead and leave those blank for our purposes. We'll also specify that we're using our Denolix domain, and we'll add the user to the user's um, organizational unit. So click Finish. We have our new step. And let's go ahead and just add one more step. Because we also want to go ahead and give this user an exchange inbox. So we'll drag create mailbox onto the canvas and we'll grab our username from our InfoPath context one more time. But for the last step uh, for decline we're going to go ahead and just send an email back to the person who submitted the request so either if the manager declines or if the HR approver declines, we'll send out this email, send it from a system account. And send it to the originator. We could also add some additional context in the body if that would be necessary. At this point, our process is complete. We can go ahead and save this process and then deploy. Now that this process has been deployed, let's go ahead and see what it looks like at runtime. We'll go into our form library and add a new document. And let's go ahead and fill in some details here. Once we've filled out all the details, we can go ahead and click Submit. And that will send the form to the K2 server to start processing. The first step in the process is the hiring manager approval. So let's go in to a browser session logged in as Holly and refresh our K2 work list we'll see that the new task has come through for the marketing manager with our unique label. Let's go ahead and open up 
the view flow reporting. In this report, we can see the map of the process and an indicator to show where we currently are in the manager approval step. Let's go back to Holly's browser. Go ahead and open that task. You see that the form will load with the manager approval view. We can go ahead and take a specific action, approve, and click submit. That will take the approved action and move the process on. Go back to our view flow and see that it's now gone for HR approval. The administrator is a member of the HR approval role. So let's go ahead and open up his task. Get a similar view, but for the HR approval step, we'll take the approve action and click submit. Going back to the view flow, if we let this refresh, we'll see that it'll go ahead and create our Active Directory user and create the Exchange inbox. In summary, we took an InfoPath form, deployed it to SharePoint using InfoPath form services, added a process using the K2 Designer for SharePoint, deployed, and ran that process.